Hello everybody, it's uh, Peter the Rock. It's a very exciting moment in the construction of the HS2 viaduct over the Colne Valley. Now, the segment that I filmed in the previous video, it's now quarter to six or so, has been turned through 90 degrees clockwise and has been moved into position. You can see that it actually uh, the shape of it will fit the gap that it's going to be lowered into. So this is very exciting. It's a moment that I didn't think I'd ever see. And of course I may not be able to see again because um, the next segments and piers that are fitted will be slightly out of, uh, out of view. But um, they've moved it quite quickly uh, from way over there towards the back of Dominique. Um, lift, they lifted it up, moved it along, they've turned it through 90 degrees and they've positioned it now above the gap into which it will fall. Uh, lots of cranes and cherry pickers uh, moving around and I don't know um, about the glue when that's applied um, or even how it's applied or when it's applied or what's going on even if there is any glue but they are talking to each other and there's a chap there you can just see him he just sort of casually just pushed the segment to get it correctly aligned although it's several tons these things are fairly easy I should think to, to move slightly and uh, you can see where it's going to fit. Can you hear that, by the way? That is a Chilton 9 train. I almost caught a glimpse of it over there. It's, it's um, getting on for a mile south of here. But the, the beauty of the, that line will be surpassed by the beauty of this line. And Chilton line trains are becoming, uh, coming across this, this um, valley for dozens of years and no one's worried about it at all but you can see where the segment um, doesn't have a number on it nothing like that you know will fit into the pier and that's going to be the, the uh, it's interesting the way they built it because they seem to have uh, got the pier with the sort of two prongs to it and then they build up the middle bits to make it a really solid uh, pier and then they sort of work outwards I think and that makes sense because uh, if, if you just work in one direction you, it's going to be not top heavy but side heavy and uh, it's best to work in both directions at once. So this is the last piece of the jigsaw to be inserted into this pier here and they're lowering it bit by bit I think or getting it aligned hopefully it does fit that would be terrible if it doesn't I have to go and get another piece the chugging is encouraging I think it's, it is being lowered inch by inch as they do the final adjustments and um, what we should see you can see daylight just at the left of this to be lowered concrete segment um, yes that daylight has gone so it is being lowered but so slowly um, I'm so pleased that things are happening slowly to be honest because I um, I had to stop filming to uh, make some more space on my camera um, anyway it's 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 the halfway there it's sort of a does it fit? I uh, uh, don't like the sound of that. Um, I did mention in a, in a, a very much earlier video that when I was on a building site, I, I was a student and I worked in Dover Docks and they put a, a chimney up. I, I worked on a, a, a freight shed and they put a chimney up to a, a, a freight, a lorry shed 
they've put a chimney up about as high as Dominique is now um, to extract the fumes from the lorries. In those days, you know, the petrol was leaded and uh, there, there wasn't anything other than petrol and diesel. And they'd uh, put a fan on top of, the, uh, of this chimney and it was a three and a half ton fan, but it didn't fit. And the buggins here had to climb up the inside of the chimney on scaffolding poles or scaffold poles, as we called it, with a kango, which is like a, a lighter road drill and chip away at the inside of the chimney to um, slowly let the three and a half ton metal fan descend above my head into the gaps that I was making in the chimney. Which I, was, I didn't even wear the heart out, I don't think. But um, this is, of course, before the days of health and safety. But um, I quite enjoyed doing that. You know, I, was, I suppose I was a key person and perhaps the most exp expendable. <laughs> but um, there you go. So um, I'm hoping that this is being lowered as we speak. It does seem to be going very, very slowly down. Yes, it is definitely going down. You can see its support is a, the yellow bit above, which is holding it and slowly lowering it into the gap. It's almost agonizingly slowly, but it, it does fit trike the, the tolerance, the engineering tolerance, because these things are, you know, within a, a millimeter, I should think, of being the right size for the right um, gap. Uh, you don't want it to be too small because then there'll be too much glue to put there. You don't want to be too big because then it won't fit. So um, it's a marvelous example of a uh, of engineering. Um, if you like or loathe HS2, and I'm sure there are lots of people on both sides of that equation, um, it's just spectacular the way it works. Now, my, my duck friend has gone and got his, his mate to come along because they too are excited to see the pier um, uh, become become one and uh, though they don't seem to be paying it much attention and it's still being lowered it's still being lowered folks isn't this fantastic it obviously fits now I, I, it's a mystery to me as to where and when and if and how the glue is applied um, well I, I don't know it's a point of speculating but when the when this last segment fits the gap, maybe then, maybe then they do it. But I've never seen this before. This is very exciting. Thanks a lot for watching, because I've made a, a few videos today, probably totaling half an hour or 40 minutes, I don't know. And um, I do appreciate your patience in watching history being made. This is a lovely lake. It won't be spoiled by having a viaduct across it, really. Um, it's not really used for anything else. It was probably once a gravel pit, as a lot of the lakes around here were. Who knows, it may open up for a bit of sailing or paddle boarding or whatever. Now you can hear it again. There's another train on the Chilton line. It's quite interesting. Um, so they are talking to each other and the, and the sounds they're making seem to be fairly okay. There's no shouting or yelling or, or uh, it doesn't seem to be totally straight to me, but um, I don't know. But it's halfway into its slot now. And it's only got another ooh, five foot to go. If the average orange suited chap is six foot tall, that's about the, the height that it's still got left to descend. Um, so whoever's controlling that, that crane, the launching girder, is, uh, is doing a very good job. 
you can't rush these things. If you put it in too fast and you broke it, well, that would set the project back considerable time. Anyway, I, I, this has been 10 minutes long now. I think I might stop it here and make one final video once it's in place. Thanks a lot for watching. It's Peter the Rock. It's Tuesday the 2nd of April. Like and subscribe. Cheers.